everybody's going over to the left, my left, your right, more body heat on that side. Everybody's just clustered in one area. That's great. I want to thank you for coming out here on this, this wonderful day of weather. It says cold weather in my script, but if we think positive, we're going to warm up. Uh, to join us here today for the groundbreaking ceremony for the construction of our new residence hall. Joining us today is Britain's new mayor and alumna, Aaron Stewart. Hi, Aaron, and thank you for your support. Big round of applause for Mayor Stewart, please. Our local legislative delegation could not be here because both the House and Senate are in session this morning, but they sent us their best wishes and congratulations for this exciting new project. As you'll hear, this new facility is a critical piece of our ongoing campus enhancement program. Two years ago, we broke ground for the new Social Sciences Hall, which has added needed classroom and office space. We will soon begin working on a new dining services hall. All this is part of our responsible stewardship of state resources to provide great, educationally supportive campus for our students. It is now my pleasure to introduce the president of Central Connecticut State University, Dr. Jack Miller. Dr. Miller. Thank you, Dr. Galligan. Well, this residence hall has been a long time coming. Uh, it's been a long time since we've built a new residence hall, and it's taken a lot of planning and a lot of work uh, to get us here. I want to especially thank Don DeFranzo, our friend and our neighbor, uh, who lives in the neighborhood, for all of his work when we were having problems with getting this done, when we were running into slippage. He worked hard to, to move this ahead for us. So Don, we appreciate your work for the support of the board. President Gray, for your continued support of this project we're most appreciative. It fits into our plans for the university. It fits into our plans for recruitment of students. We are not attempting to become uh, all residential institution. We will always have many commuters and many part-time students and many graduate students, but it does fit in to the model of increasing uh, the number of new students. And it gives us the opportunity to begin to take off of line, one by one, the older residence halls for refurbishment, which they badly need, as everyone who's ever been in one of them knows they badly need. And I know the students that are here particularly recognize that. Uh, this is going to be a state-of-the-art facility. Over 600 students will be housed there in, in 150 suites. And it'll keep us at the, at the forefront in higher education. And it continues our success and commitment in terms of environmental sustainability. We've really put the things together recently that I think have improved tremendously the profile of the university. We've added a lot of great academic programs, and the provost has worked hard on those. We've added programs in engineering and nursing and different foreign language programs, and the list goes on and on, to be relevant to what the needs of the state are. We've added it tremendously in terms of student success. We've taken the graduation rate of undergraduate students from 40% to 52%, a tremendous increase. We've added tremendously in the amount of support that we put in to and, and make available to our students. I looked uh, with the help of uh, Charlene Casmento our chief financial officer the other day, and over the last 10 years, the amount of financial aid between federal, institutional, institutional private, institutional money that we put in to, for state-based financial aid, over the last 10 years, we've increased by 255% the amount of financial aid awarded to students. So we know it's tough, we know it's expensive, but on the other hand, we're now awarding over $26 million a year at this institution to support students 
with those tough expenses. So we've added all those things. And now, finally, the facilities with the new academic building, with the new residence hall, and other new buildings that are online are starting to come in to connection with the other great things that have gone on here. So thank you all. And in particular, I want to thank Richard Basiu and all of his staff. I see Sal. I see lots of other people here. Uh, I don't want to start naming everybody. But your work on this has been diligent over a long period of time. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Miller. As president of the Board of Regents, Dr. Gregory Gray is leading the charge to transform Connecticut's 17 colleges and universities into one interdependent system that better serves students and ensures that Connecticut's system of higher education remains accessible, affordable, and accountable. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Gray. Dr. Gray? Well, thank you very much. I'm very, very, very pleased to be here on a bright and sunny day. And uh, yeah, it's not too bad, actually, in terms of temperature. Uh, good morning, Commissioner. Nice to meet you. Uh, and it's certainly a, a pleasure for me to see all of you here today, because what it uh, shows to me, and I think to all of our Board of Regents, is this connectivity that all of our colleges and the state system have. Uh, the mayors here today. You know, Central has enjoyed an interconnectivity with the local community for years and years and years, and they are one of the same. I see uh, uh, police officers here, security, faculty, and most importantly out there, I see some students. Someone had mentioned uh, the new plan for our state system of higher education, Transform CSCU 220. It is very interesting to me that as that plan progresses, uh, one of the things that President Miller talked about was how uh, what's happening at Central fits really and in closely into that plan. Facilities, we have deferred maintenance, a, a lot of it to be dealt with over the next several years. And some of the dorms that you uh, referenced earlier, the older dorms will be part of that deferred maintenance and repurposing them for the future. And certainly the, the new facilities that are here and about to come to Central will really, I think, help to, uh, to put this particular university on the map. Uh, so when you look at uh, the facilities, you look at the connection that we have uh, with the uh, local communities, it's very impressive to me but one other thing I think is important and Jack mentioned it a little bit earlier these fabulous facilities this fantastic faculty and staff that we have here have to be accessible to the residents of the state of Connecticut all of you appreciate that tuition has been going up and up and up and uh, I think it's no secret that our Board of Regents will be addressing uh, a tuition hike next year that's uh, pretty minimal. And it will be announced next week, and uh, it's going to be 2%, probably, if the Board of Regents approves that. And what it's saying, I think, to communities and colleges like Central is that the Board of Regents is committed to the state and to the universities to make sure that our affordability is going to permit people to come to these fine facilities. And in the long run, I think, Jack and others, it's going to help to fill up those dorms and actually get more and more and more students here because the quality of our education is first class. And now we're trying to put a price structure together for families that will allow it to be affordable. So when you combine all of these things together, thanks to Jack's leadership and everyone else sitting here today. Uh, it's a good time uh, to be part of the state system for higher education here in Connecticut. Uh, I'm pleased to be here. It's nice that I get to come out and uh, shovel dirt every so often. Uh, that's a major part of my job, but it's a lot of fun because what I can see is a very, very bright future. So thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Gray. Now we'll hear from Commissioner Donald DeFranzo as head of administrative services. He also oversees the Department of Construction Services, which is responsible for the design and construction of our new residence hall. Given his New Britain roots as a former city mayor and state representative, we appreciate Don's continued support. Commissioner DeFranzo. Thank you very much, and I'm very happy to be home in New Britain today on a warmer day. I could have walked over President Miller. And glad to be here with President Miller <coughs> and Board of Regents President President Gray on this important day. First, uh, I just want to say uh, 
The governor couldn't be here this morning, but uh, I know he is very proud of his commitment to higher education and very commitment to this university and to this campus. This is the third major project we've had here since 2011, and we're not done yet. When Governor Malloy speaks of strategic capital investments in Connecticut's future, this is the type of program, uh, project he's talking about. A project which meets the educational needs of today's students, a project which puts people back to work in the construction industry, and better prepares our state to meet the challenges of a global economy in the future. This is an $82.3 million project. It'll involve local contractors, local suppliers, and local labor. The residence hall to be erected here will house 620 students, administrative offices, meeting space, and a state-of-the-art fitness students for faculty and students. This has been a great team effort, uh, and I would like to acknowledge the staff of Central Connecticut State University, Mr. Beishu in particular, and his staff, the staff at the Board of Regents, and our own staff at the Division of Construction Services who've worked so hard on this project. Specifically, I want to recognize uh, Deputy Commissioner Salemi, Emilio Pizzaferrato. Is Emilio here? I don't yes. know. Oh, he is back here, Emilio. Uh, Peter Simmons, who is here. I saw Peter earlier. And the rest of our staff. I also want to thank President Miller for his persistent leadership on this project. It's, this project has been on the books for a number of years. And without his leadership, uh, it would not be uh, coming to fruition today. And I also want to recognize Dimio Construction and SLAM Collaborative, who have been selected as a construction team for this residence hall. We look forward to great things here. And as I said, we have some other very big plans for this campus. And we look forward to getting those underway very soon. So thank you, President Miller, for having me here today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner DeFranzo. As vice, as vice President of Student Affairs, Dr. Laura Tordenti knows better than most how important this new residence hall will be in recruiting new students and supporting our resident student needs. Dr. Tordenti. In almost two decades, CCSU is Connecticut's only four-year public institution that has not built a new residence hall. And today, we will change that history. When this facility opens, there will be a variety of unique living learning communities for our students, which will include well-appointed suites, a fitness center, meeting space for over 300 students, and state-of-the-art security. This residence hall will rival some of the best in the country. And as Dr. Miller said, it truly has been a long time coming. And it's a very fitting way to enhance our outstanding residential life program. So I think it's time to get some shovels in the ground, right? Because it's cold out here. It is. Yes. Thank you. Who else are we waiting for? <laughs> Okay, we're going to do a couple of uh, different photo shots here. First, our primary folks. Our speakers. Come on, Richard. Shovels up. <laughs> ready? Everybody ready? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Six. <laughs> 